Today we're going to make my favorite peach cobbler. For the peach cobbler filling, you can either use frozen or fresh peaches. You'll just want to make sure that you take the core out and that they are peeled. Um, I like to use frozen because I always keep them in the freezer, so it just makes it easier. So we're going to add those to a medium-sized pot. Add in our brown and white sugar. And then we're just going to turn that to a medium low heat and just cook it for about five minutes just so all those sugars are incorporated with the peaches. While the peaches are cooking on the oven, I like to go ahead and start the batter for the topping for the actual cobbler portion. So we have our butter, it should be room temperature. We're gonna add in our ground cinnamon and then our ground nutmeg. When you use also um, for ingredients and things like that, I do recommend to use a really good spice because when you use a higher quality spice, you're really gonna bring out those um, true flavors in the dish. I like to use kosher salt in baking. So when you're measuring your sugar, you'll want to shake off the excess to make sure that you get a nice even amount. Add that in. We are using a one-to-one -one gluten free flour and we're going to measure it the exact same way where we're shaking off the excess flour. You don't want to pack it in. One and a half cups. I get distracted easily so I have to keep looking at my sheet. You guys know that uh, between being ADD and dyslexic, I reread things like five times over because I scroll and miss something. Let's get in our almond extract and it calls for one teaspoon. You could always sub this, substitute this out for vanilla extract. I just really like the taste of the almond in this dish. And then our buttermilk. So if you are making a um, dairy-free version of the buttermilk, you're gonna go ahead and do a combination of a thicker milk, like a pea milk. I love Ripple, it's one of my favorite go-to ones. And oat milk will work really good, like a creamy oat milk. And then you're gonna add a teaspoon of white vinegar. Let it sit for like five to 10 minutes and then it's going to create buttermilk. Let's go ahead and add that in. And now we're gonna go ahead and mix it and cut in that butter at the same time. The butter is going to make it so flaky and delicious because you're gonna have like little almost butter pockets. It's almost like a biscuit. <sighs> so good. I've made this cobbler for so many people and they always rave about it. Nobody will know that this is a gluten-free, dairy-free cobbler. It is so good. The great part with this recipe too is you can sub out those peaches for your favorite fruit. Um, I've made a mixed berry, you could do cherry, strawberry, rhubarb, you name it. And you can use the exact same ingredients, especially like an apple cobbler. Oh, so good. That is almost mixed in. We just want to get rid of all that flour because we don't want a floury pocket in this. Okay, that's ready. Let's go ahead and check on our peaches. Okay, our peaches are warming up here. Now, if you're using fresh peaches and not frozen ones, they're going to cook up a lot quicker than frozen ones. These ones take right around, I would say, five to ten minutes approximately, where fresh peaches will probably be five minutes max. But we just want to make sure that most of that sugar is nice and dissolved and that our peaches are nicely coated. And it is almost there. That's perfect. So you can see like the syrup is starting. That's exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and get this cobbler assembled. You can use different size dishes. Um, so you could use like a round baking dish if you wanted to use square. I just like to use um, something that's right around the seven by 10 measurement because that's gonna give us a really nice ratio of peaches to the cobbler topping. And if you're going to be making this for a group, you can easily double, triple this to make it a nine by 13. So we're gonna add in those peaches. Oh, it already smells so good, guys. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited, this is gonna be lunch. We're just going to spread those out so it cooks evenly. And you could use a spoon. I absolutely love using an ice cream scoop. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. I say that a lot. I have a lot of kitchen tools. <laughs> They're just nice little tricks that I've used over the years. But it helps make sure that when you do this, that everything just is evenly distributed. And we have our oven preheating, so this can go right in. Now, if you wanted, you could sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of the cobbler breaded portion. 
and let's go ahead and get it in the oven. We're gonna set the timer and let that get baking and we'll show you the end results. You guys, it smells so good. I wish I could share this with you guys. Our peach cobbler is out of the oven and we're gonna go ahead and serve this up. So this does have a lot of juices in it. The longer it sits, those juices are going to thicken up and especially for the next day. Right now, this is going to be a lot juicier. It's almost like a peach syrup and we're gonna get some vanilla ice cream on there. This just smells so good. And let's get our ice cream. I pretty much grew up on briars and so did Joe. So I just always go for the dairy-free briars, but there's so many delicious options out there. And we're gonna go classic vanilla on this one. And there it is, classic peach cobbler.